Hey guys, what's up and welcome to my channel. So a few weeks ago on my Instagram and community tab, I posted a picture of four fabric swatches asking you guys which fabric I should go with for a reupholstery project. And I am getting to that project this week. And also I feel like I'm finally getting to this project. This is a chair right here that I'm going to be reupholstering. And this girl has been sitting around in my basement for the last two years in desperate, desperate need of a facelift. This is an old Thomasville chair, so she's got really good bones but the fabric is completely falling apart. Also, I'm just putting this out here. I got this chair from my in-laws and they might want it back after I finish this project, but I'm just letting them know right here, right now. You, you can't have it back. You gave it to me, it's mine. <laughs> I'm just kidding, <laughs> but, but really no, you actually, you, you can't have it back. Okay, <laughs> we got that out of the way. <laughs> and it has been a while since I have done a reupholstery project of this size. So I'm really looking forward to doing this project, but I am not looking forward to this first step, which is the worst part of reupholstering, and that is ripping off all of the gross old fabric. So let's stop denying the inevitable and just get started. Okay, I'm about to have so much fun ripping off all of this gross old fabric. It's gonna be so much fun. Okay, so really quick, I have been asked this question multiple times on like how I know how to upholster and how I know how to re-upholster. As far as my upholstery skills go, everything for the most part is self-taught, but because of my background in costume design and knowing how to sew and knowing how to work with fabric, I feel like I picked up re-upholstering and upholstery pretty easily. So in no way am I like a professional reupholster. Um, mainly everything I know how to do is through trial and error. Um, so if you have taken any kind of training or course on reupholstering and you have any tips and tricks for me, uh, let me know in the comments down below. And with a chair like this, the first thing that I have to do is remove this back panel. This is gonna allow me to see how all of the other pieces are attached to this chair and then get those removed. And a lot of times I just use whatever pliers I have laying around, but this time around, I actually got reupholstery tools uh, to remove fabric. And ideally you wanna keep the panels or the pieces as intact as you possibly can because you use those as a pad to cut out the new fabric. So I am gonna get this first piece removed and then we can go from there. Okay, so now that I have uh, this back panel removed, I can kind of, for the most part, see how everything is attached. So the next piece that I'm going to remove is the side panels and then probably also the arm piece because from what I can tell, this is two separate pieces right here. And as I'm removing everything, I'm making notes of which order I took things off in because whatever order I take things off in, I will reverse that order when I'm putting everything back on. Also, I am so glad I got these tools because this is making this process so much easier. So I'm going to continue on with uh, all the rest of the pieces and getting everything removed. Guys, I had the best time yesterday breathing in gross dust that has been sitting in this chair for years. It was such a good time. Such a good time. <laughs> Um, so I guess today I'm gonna start the process of reupholstering 
this chair. But before I get to working with the new fabric, I've gotta get this chair cleaned up a bit further. There's still a bunch of like dust and crumbs that I've gotta get vacuumed up. There's a bunch of staples that are still like stuck in this chair that I've gotta get ripped out so that I've got the cleanest chair possible to start uh, reupholstering it. Also, I'm gonna put off working with the new fabric for a little while because I am still trying to process what needs to happen with the first piece that I'm going to be attaching, which is like this front panel bottom piece. So while I process what needs to happen with the first piece, I'm gonna get this chair cleaned up. Let's do it. Okay guys, it's time to get started on uh, this first piece. And this is definitely going to be the most complicated of all the pieces because this front section had a lot of layers to it. So this is the original front piece. It's sewn up on the corners so that it wraps around the edge of the chair. Um, so what I'm gonna do is seam rip open where this piece is sewn so that I can lay it flat and know what I have to sew with the new fabric. And speaking of new fabrics, for those of you that helped me pick out this new fabric, the winner of my two polls on Instagram and on my community tab was fabric a. It is the beautiful like kind of like velvety corduroy striped fabric. I am obsessed with it. I love this even more than the little swatch that came. So I'm excited. I think this chair with this fabric is going to be freaking beautiful. So I'm going to stop procrastinating and get started. <laughs> Wish me luck. Once I knew this front green piece was going to work, I had to attach it to a piece of black cotton fabric. So I laid everything out on the chair to figure out where the two pieces needed to connect. And then from there, I could attach everything to the chair and start layering this section with foam and batting and really building up this section so that it was nice and padded. Okay, well, I feel like I can breathe a huge sigh of relief now that this first piece is done. And it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. And I think the next two pieces that I'm going to do are the two arm pieces that come up and over the arms. Um, and I've got the two original pieces right here. Um, and I'm just gonna use these as a loose template because I think what is working the best is giving myself plenty of fabric to work with and then stapling everything in place and then cutting the fabric back. So uh, I'm gonna keep going and hopefully everything continues to go as smoothly as this first piece was. Excuse me, <laughs> if he even, oh, if he even gets his claws out. Ex oh my God, oh no. Buddy. 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 I just reupholstered this. 
Okay, <laughs> so now that I have the arms all done, I can work on these side panels, which should be pretty easy and pretty straightforward. So all I'm gonna do is cut out a piece, uh, flip it up, use this cardboard tape stuff to staple a nice straight line and then flip the fabric down and staple all up in this groove and then pull it to the back. Um, and also I'm just reusing the original foam that was on this side panel. So I'm gonna get started. Okay guys, this is the part where I start to get excited and just want the project to be done so that I can see how it looks, but so far, so good. Um, I'm gonna quickly move on to this front back piece and then I'm gonna stop for the night because I do have to do some sewing before I'm able to add the actual like back panel on. So I'm gonna do that and I'll see you guys in the morning. This chair matches your eyes. Yes, it does. <laughs> okay guys, good morning. I am a little nervous because Clyde is currently on this chair that I do not want his PT claws on. My goal for today is to finish up this chair. Whether that happens or not, I do not know, but that's at least my goal for today. Um, so the only piece left that I have to actually upholster and attach onto this chair is the back panel, which you currently can't see. Um, but before I attach that back panel, I need to make some cording. Cording is that decorative trim that you will see on cushions and pillows or like on the edge of an arm or something something like that. And then I've got some more cording to do, but I'm gonna explain everything as I go along. So first step is making some cording for the back of this chair. Okay guys, now's the part that uh, besides the first piece that I was nervous about, this is the other piece I'm the most nervous about because I'm honestly not that good at doing the backs of chairs. <laughs> but with every reupholstery project I do, I get a little bit better. So hopefully this will go a little bit smoother than previous times. So with an actual professional reupholsterer, they would most likely use these metal strip things. I hate working with these things and I'm not really good at working with them. So we're getting rid of them. I'm not using it. And I'm gonna use uh, this cardboard again. And I'm kind of gonna do a similar thing like I did for the sides. I'm gonna flip the fabric over the chair, staple, 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 and then flip the fabric back over. And then for the sides of the back, I have these metal strippy, spiky things. And uh, how these work is you stick them through the fabric and then you pull the fabric around and in, and then you hammer, 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 hammer into the sides. And, uh, and then for the bottom, I'm just going to staple like normal because I'm gonna have some trim that's gonna cover those staples. I'm gonna stop procrastinating now and uh, just go for it. You can do it, Miley. You can do it. <laughs> Wow. 
well. It's uh, it's not perfect, but I will say this is the best I have ever done. So the final thing that I have to do before moving on to making new cushion covers for this chair is making some double welt cording. This is the previous double welt cording that was on the chair. To make double welt cording, I did need to get a specific double welt presser foot for my sewing machine. It was like five bucks on Amazon, so I have that. So I'm gonna get started making a bunch of this double welt cording, and you're probably going to be shocked as to how you actually attach this double welt cording. Um, but let me first make it, and then I can show you how I'm going to attach it. Boom, all of the double welt cording is done. And it was so satisfying to make. That's the first time I've ever made double welt cording. I've only ever made single welt cording, but it was really easy and very satisfying. So I said earlier, you guys might be a little surprised as to how I'm going to attach this cording. And I am going to be using hot glue. Yay, yes, this is actually how a professional reupholster would attach this trim. Um, you can technically use staples, but I think most people prefer hot glue. Not totally sure, but I think that's what I've seen. You can use normal hot glue. I went ahead and got fabric hot glue since I'm working with fabric and I only just discovered a few months ago that fabric hot glue existed, thanks to my sister-in-law. So uh, I figured it might be a little bit better than normal hot glue. So I'm gonna get this trim attached and then we can start making some new cushion covers. Okay, so the part I have been looking forward to the most. Now I just get to sit and sew and make some new cushion covers. The first step in making these cushion covers is getting the old cushion covers removed, getting everything seam ripped apart because I'm going to use these as my patterns for the new cushion cover. Also, I think what I'm gonna do once I get everything seam ripped apart, I'm gonna go ahead and also make some more cording because both the uh, bottom cushion and the back cushion have cording on them. So I want my new cushion covers to look the same, just out of new fabric. And uh, I am already getting sleepy and it's only four o'clock. So I'm probably going to be finishing up these cushion covers tomorrow, but I'm gonna work as long as I possibly can. But uh, yeah, sleepy sewing Miley is never a good combination. Testing one, two, three, okay. Good morning, hello. Uh, so, <laughs> I started to not feel good yesterday. That came out of nowhere, but also explains why I got so tired so early in the day. Uh, but I now have some medicine and I got some sleep, so I'm feeling better. I just kind of don't sound the best, but I, f I feel okay. Um, so, I'm gonna get this chair finished up today. I'm gonna start with making the back cushion because it'll be easy and I can just get it knocked out. So I've got my back cushion pattern piece right here and then I've also got another piece that I have to get cut out that I'm gonna sew into the cushion. That's what gives the back cushion its shape to work around the arms or like sit on the arms. So I'm gonna quickly knock out this back cushion and then we can go from there. Thank you. 
Normally when I make a cushion cover, I'll just measure out the space and make my own pattern. But because the seat and back cushion for this chair had such a specific shape, I knew the easiest way to get these cushion covers just right was to seam rip everything apart and use it as a pattern. I am so close to finishing this chair. I am so excited. I cannot wait to see how everything looks when it's all done. Mm! But that being said, I uh, ran into an issue. It wasn't a huge deal, or I guess in the end, it's not gonna be a huge deal, but it was an issue nonetheless. Um, I don't have enough of this green fabric to completely make a seat cushion. Oopsies. Um, so what I did is I just ran out and I got a thicker black canvas uh, fabric that I'm gonna use for the bottom of the seat cushion, which is not a huge deal because that actually is a pretty standard thing in upholstery anyway. So to make this seat cushion, I am going to use the previous pattern, get the top cut out, get the cording attached, and then I'll cut out the bottom piece of the black fabric, attach green cording to that, get the side panels cut out, and then attach the two pieces, add a zipper, Bada bing, bada boom, the seat cushion is done and this chair is done. So I'm gonna get started so that we can finish this chair. To make this seat cushion, I had to take this process really nice and slow because of the very specific shape this seat cushion had. Especially once I got to sewing the top and bottom piece together, it was really important in this step to get the corners matching up perfectly. If that didn't happen, the cushion cover would have twisted and warped and looked weird and I would have had to seam rip everything apart and start over. And that is it guys. All I can say is that I'm obsessed. I'm also so happy that two years ago, I took this chair when my mother-in-law said she was getting rid of it. I almost didn't take it, and had I not taken it, well, I, I wouldn't have this chair. I'm pretty sure this is my favorite piece of furniture that I now own. The color and texture of the fabric is just beautiful, and it was already a really comfy and cozy chair, but nobody really ever sat in it because it was all beat up. Now I can say for sure that this chair is going to be used all the time, and I don't really read, but I feel like I wanna take up reading because this chair just screams, sit and read a book. <laughs> so I hope you guys liked this video and project. I'm so glad I finally got around to reupholstering this chair. And as always, thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. Bye.